Hello, welcome to another video. So we're going to carry on with the Manjaro 19.0 releases and we're going to go with the Community Edition of i3. So before we get going, spoiler alert, this has been my favourite version of the Manjaro 19.0 releases that I've looked at so far. There's a few more I need to look at though, so the jury's not fully out on that one yet, and we shall see. So I'm going to start with what we've got on the screen. We have a widget, a Conkey widget here, which tells you the date. CPU utilization, RAM, swap, and in Manjaro Linux 19.0 Kyria. Tyler, and then Tyler at your host name, which is Tyler Lappy, uptime of 17 minutes and 11 seconds. And then it tells you your kernel plus what kernel you were running, which is 5.4.22-1 Manjaro. And then down at the bottom left, we just have sort of the you know commonly used keyboard shortcut keys like open new terminal, key or focus window, open browser, etc. Um, I'm going to get into a couple of these because as you can see there, open browser is at mod F2. I won't leave any of my keyboard shortcuts using them keys because I like to use the function keys without for my brightness and volume without having to press Fn. So I have it as default that they are just automatically activated. So if I was to have a keyboard shortcut that uses the function key, so let's use that one for example modern f2 it wouldn't be more than f2 it would be fn mod and then f2 and that's just too much of a pain for me so i'm going to change a lot of those i've changed a couple already and we'll have a look at that in a moment as well so what we're going to do now is have a look at this bottom bar so starting from right to left we have a very nice and clean simple volume slider here i really like that we have our package manager so let's quickly jump into that and see if there's any updates to get and as you can see, this is opening in floating window mode. Nope, we are fully up to date. We have our clock and date. Then we have available RAM and RAM in use. Um, so this is saying 474. Let's see what HTOP says. So HTOP says 571. Let's keep going. So you've got your battery indicator here um, telling you the percentage and whether you're charging or not. So if we take the charger out, that should turn into a little battery icon. There we go. And we also got the notification at the top right. So if we put it back in, the battery icon should, have, uh, the little bolt should appear, and it has. So no LAN, we haven't got any Ethernet connected, so that's why it says no LAN. Um, that's your disk there, and then CPU utilization, and it says 0.2% here, and then it says 1% on there. Uh, it says 1% there as well now. Okay, and now here you've got your workspaces or your virtual desktops, however you like to call it. So it's one to eight, but that can all be changed. So the only reason I know that is because before I even looked at the configuration file, I tried to go to sort of nine, and then it sort of has a delayed effect and it will lock your screen so you can't use it until you enter your password. So you've got one to eight by default, but that can all be changed. So as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's go back to one. So installed, we're not going to go through everything, we'll just have a sort of look at some of the main stuff that we've got installed. So it has SSH server, VNC server browser, and also the ZeroConf browser. It has your Bluetooth adapters and manager, so it uses Compton as your Windows compositor. Deluge is your torrent client. This is the main version. You can download a minimal version, I do believe, so a lot of this won't be in there. Um, Discord I installed myself. EPDF viewer, so the file manager it uses is PCMAN FM. So what version though do we have? Let's have a look. Oh, it says it right there, silly boy, 1.3.1. And if we just go to about, it'll also say it there, 1.3.1. So Firefox, I installed that myself. It uses Pale Moon as its default web browser that I'm not too familiar with. So if we just open up the default web browser, as you can see, it uses Pale Moon, which defaults to DuckDuckGo as your search engine. Huh, doesn't want to click on that for some reason. Um, I can't tell. I think it's like version 20 or something. 28. I think it's version 28, if my memory serves me right, which it usually doesn't. So <laughs> let's keep going. So we have Firefall, Firefall, Firewall Configuration, G-Color 2, GIMP, g Parted Partition Editor, and hex chat for your IRC client, HP device manager, comes with HTOP, Cavantum for theming, LibreOffice, which I chose over FreeOffice in the installation process. I always choose LibreOffice over FreeOffice actually. I've not spent too much time with FreeOffice. Uh, Mousepad for your text editor, network manager, Nitrogen. So we're going to have a look at Nitrogen. So if you've used an i3 distribution or just i3 before on any Linux distribution, you'll probably be quite familiar with Nitrogen. So it's kind of the standard. But I've changed the wallpaper and I've done it for quite a specific reason actually. So the default wallpaper is nice, but I don't think the colour works very well with this bar. 
So once you get to this point here, you can no longer distinguish when the bar ends and the wallpaper begins. For most people, that's not a big issue. But for me, little things like that really wind me up and I'll just, I'll, I'll be looking at it all the time and I'll go a bit crazy. So that's nitrogen. Um, VirtualBox, we installed ourselves. Power Manager uses the XFCE Power Manager. Preferred Applications, QT5 Settings, QT V4L2 Test Utility and Video Capture Utility. Ranger, Software Token and yep software token and token small telegram we installed ourself um, terminator so i've changed the default terminal to terminator i just think it looks a bit nicer so here's terminator and then the default is this they're both nice but i just prefer terminator i'm just going to quickly move my face now that we've had a look at the bottom bar so i don't get in the way of any terminal screens so one moment. okay that's better yeah like i say i just prefer the sort of transparency that you get on terminator not that you can't, you probably can do it with this, I just prefer it. So if I was to go into preferences here, I just prefer Terminator the way it does things and I just prefer changing the colour profiles and then etc on here. So let's see what it looks like with the user theme. Let's click close and then we'll open another one. Ah, there you go, I'm going to leave it like that. So yeah, Terminator is my default terminal, so let's just open up a couple and see how it looks now. Yeah, nice, I can, I can live with that. So yeah, I quite like the way Terminator looks on here, so I'm gonna keep that as my default terminal. Um, let's have a little more of a look. I'm not gonna go through all of this, I don't wanna to get too bogged down on what it comes installed with. Um, View Noir, Image Viewer, VLC, Volume Icon, which was that nice little slider we saw earlier. X Archiver, XF Burn, and just a few more other things. So it's got Conkey, Asla, and you know, etc. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna open up a couple of applications and just see how it looks with the gaps as well. So it does have gaps automatically. You can change it all in the configuration file, which we'll also have a look at. So here's Firefox and it will be version 73, I think. Let's go to help and about. It should be version 73 or something like that or close to it. Yep, 73.0.1 is your Firefox version. So let's see what that looks like side by side with LibreOffice. So then let's open up Writer. Very nice. So then if I wanted to move to the other window, you'd press J. So Super and J. So let's close some of these now, which is Super, Shift and Q. So if you wanted to just open loads like that, it would keep tiling it like that. But then if you wanted to sort of do it a different way, you can do V or H, which will change it to vertical or horizontally. And as you can see, it's done that like that for us. So let's close all of these now. And then what we're going to do is have a look at the configuration file. So home.i3 slash config. So that's brought us into the configuration file. I'm just going to zoom it in for us. Um, about there should be cool. Right, so what I'm going to do is just quickly search for terminal. And then you can see that we've changed it to terminator. I'm going to make it a bit smaller though. That's a bit too big. Right, so here is our application shortcut. So we oh god, what have I done? Let me go back to that, sorry. Right, so here we are. So I've changed the default terminal, as I said, to Terminator. But if we go down to applications here, we'll see what else we've done. So like I said, I didn't want to use any FN, F1, F2, F3 or anything for any of the keyboard shortcuts. So there's a few here that I still need to go through and change. So I've changed PC man to mod shift and M. So that's how I've done that. And then that's version 1.3. I do believe we already looked at that though, so that's not too much of a worry. So let's keep going. So um, Firefox I've done as mod shift and I. So let's just make sure that's all working as it should. It is indeed. Very nice. Um, so I will need to change anything with an F number, but I'm not too worried about that for now. I need to sort of set my defaults as well. I want to get GIMP in there. I'm not sure what I'm going to put GIMP on though. But I'm not going to have too much craziness going on on here, to be honest. Um, if you wanted to change the sort of the space of those gaps that you're seeing in between, that can all be done in here as well. But let's close that. I'm going to leave it as the defaults for the most part and not change too much. Let's change our wallpaper back to something that lets us see our bar. So I'm going to use this one. This is not a default one that comes with it, by the way. Okay. You can also set your um, startup applications in that same 
file as well. So I'm going to see what the bar looks like at the top actually. So let's go back into the where we were. Oh, I've just closed it. Right, let's open them on again. Dot i three slash config. So let's find position. So let's search for position. Now oh, we're already there. Okay, so we're just going to change position to top and see what that looks like. I've not tried it yet. So let's pop that at the top. Oh, right. And then we're just going to refresh. Okay, so it does kind of clash a tiny bit with the widget there. So what we're going to do, I wonder what it looks like without the widget. So let me just kill all conky a moment. Okay, so if it, there was no conkeys there, um, maybe I might I might take that off the auto start and see if I can live without the conkeys. I'm not too fussed about conkeys for the most part, to be honest with you. I don't really deal with too many widgets. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to pop it back to the bottom for now, though. So doing the same again, we're just going to write bottom, and then we're going to do a right quick. So I don't think I need. Actually, we're going to do a right, and then we shall scroll down to the. So here you can change the sort of colours and stuff for focus windows and unfocus windows so here is the gaps here which you can change the sort of size of the gaps to your heart's content as i say we're going to leave that as the defaults don't worry that the terminals look a bit different when we reloaded they will go back to normal now it just seems to do that sometimes with terminator on here and then it resets it back to your sort of profile or whatever you want it as but yeah I'm really enjoying this. So what I'm going to do is do a sort of a fresh reboot and see how much RAM we're using at boot. But before we do that, I forgot to mention it also controls your theming with LX Appearance. So let's just jump into LX Appearance and see what the default themes for the windows and icons are, and then we'll do the reboot. So we're using Adapter Nocto Eta Maya, I think that says in the widget theme, and in an icon we are also using Papyrus Adapter Nocto Maya. So if you wanted to download any other themes, you could you know do that and then set them with this program if you wanted to change certain colors of like the windows border and stuff that you do do that in your conf file but for the most part that's kind of it really i'm really enjoying it though so i'm going to keep this on this laptop and i don't say that very often about this specific laptop so this is like the filming laptop but i've got another laptop now laptop crazy at the moment so i'm going to really sort of spend a bit of time with their 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 i3 i really like it not the quickest to start up i would have thought it would be a lot quicker than this but hey ho any moment now there we go so we are using ram wise 473 megabytes it says on there but then if we go into the actual htop it will give us a bit of a higher number so 439 not too bad though i have a number i can live with that so let's get out of that <laughs> i think i thought i was in vim or something um, then I'm just going to show you how, I don't know if I showed this or not, but this is it uses AR and R for your sort of screen resolutions, monitor and stuff. So we've got a multi-monitor set up at the moment for the capture card, but we won't change that because then you won't see what's going on. But no, I really like it. This has been my favourite version so far. And again, I will look at the other ones. I think Mate has just got the 19.0 release as well, the community editions, which I'm also excited to look at. So thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.